right, so we're going to start part two at this point. We have just finished up question number five, and we are moving on to question number six. Same problem. Question number six wants to know, what's the range of the projectile at this angle? So our angle is 35 degrees. What does range mean? Well, range means how far is it going to go in the x direction? What is dx? Well, information that I need to know that I've already solved for. From problem number one, when we broke up the velocities in the x and y components, I know that the initial speed in the x direction is 40.96 meters per second. I also know the total time it takes from firing to landing over here on the right is 5.84 seconds. I just solved that in problem number five. There's no way that I, I know of that, I mean, maybe if I thought about it, I don't think I can. I, I can't solve it without using this 5.84 number that I've already calculated. So here we get to a situation where I have to use stuff I've already previously calculated before. All right, um, in the x direction, the velocity never changes. So we're gonna use the constant speed equation d equals vt, but we're going to write it in vector format. So the displacement in the x direction is equal to the initial speed in the x direction times time. I don't even have to write it as initial speed in the x direction because it's, it's the constant speed. I could have just called it vx instead of vxi because it never changes. We're ignoring any kind of air resistance, uh, which is good for us at this point. It makes it easier. We need calculus uh, or some other ways to go about this that are kind of tricky. So we're going to assume no air resistance in this. So we know what our speed in the x direction is and we know our time. So our speed is 48.96, our time is 5.48 seconds. Multiply them together and our range of our projectile is 239.2 meters. Easy peasy. Let's look at question seven. What are the x and y components of the velocity after one and a half seconds after being fired at the given angle? So we're fired at 35 degrees. Our projectile is somewhere here. It took, uh, what was it, 2.92 seconds to go to the top. So we're not to 2.92 seconds, we're at one and a half seconds. So we're somewhere between firing and the maximum height. So I just put it right there. So I wanna know the X and Y components of the speed of that projectile at that point. So the time we know is one and a half seconds. I know the initial speed in the X direction is 40.96. I know the initial speed in the y direction is 28.68. And I know the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.81. So let's talk about the x direction first. That's easy. The velocity of the x direction at 1.5 seconds, which that's just how I labeled it, is vx 1.5, remains unchanged. It's got the same speed throughout the entire path, neglecting air resistance, which we are doing. And so it stays 40.96 meters per second the whole time. The y direction is a little trickier because as this thing is being launched, it's slowing down in the y direction. So what is the velocity in the y direction at 1.5? Well, that has to be equal to the initial speed in the y direction of our launched projectile plus the acceleration due to gravity times our time, which we know is 1.5 seconds. So the velocity in the y direction at 1.5 seconds will be equal to the initial speed, 28.68, that comes from problem one plus negative 9.81t. So in order to solve for this, I just plug this in my calculator. It's already solved for what I need. So 28.68 minus 9.81 times 1.5. I should have put a 1.5 there in for t, but I didn't. And so if you do this and you substitute a 1.5 in there for t, you should get 13.97 meters per second. That should make some, sa some sense. We know when it reaches the top, it's going zero, and it's not to the top yet. So it should be somewhere between its initial speed, 28.68 meters per second, and its final speed, zero meters per second. And sure enough, it's slowing down. It's only going about 14 meters per second or so. So easy. Same big four equations. We're just using them at different points. Question eight says... What's the observed velocity of the projectile after 1.5 seconds? So if we had some kind of way to measure the overall speed of the projectile, how fast is it going? We know from the previous problem it's going 40.96 meters per second in the x and 13.97 meters per second in the y, but what's its overall speed? 
Well, at that particular point, it's got X and Y components here. I'm going to get rid of this right here and I'm going to redraw it. So there's my projectile uh, and there's my triangle. So let's get rid of that and let's put it down here. So from the previous problem, number seven, I know at 1.5 seconds, it's going 40.96 in the X and it's going 13.97 in the Y. What is this overall speed right here? Vector problem. Easy. I know the legs of the triangle. I need to solve for the hypotenuse. That's Pythagorean theorem. I have labeled this uh, V with an arrow over it for resultant speed. Um, I can't label it as V naught because it's not the launching speed of that. So I was very careful. So I just labeled it as V vector. Uh, I could have labeled it, I probably should have labeled it as V 1.5 with a vector sign over it, but I didn't. So this is going to be the Pythagorean sum. So we're going to have the Y velocity squared at 1.5 seconds plus the X velocity squared at 1.5 seconds. Take the square root of all of that. And so our, our velocity vector then is overall 43.28 meters per second. This makes a little bit of sense. It was fired at 50. It's in the process of slowing down. It's not slowing down in the X. The X remains the same. But it's slowing down in the Y. So the overall speed is slowing down. The slowest it's ever going to go is when it reaches the maximum. It's only going to have speed in the x direction. So the slowest it's going to go is 40.96. After it reaches its maximum, it's going to start falling in the y direction. It's going to start speeding up again. Now, since this question asked for the velocity, technically I've only given a part of the answer. I've only given the magnitude. That's really what I intended to do here. But in this case, I did ask for the velocity. So that implies a magnitude, which I've just calculated, and the direction. Now, to me, I guess if I should have thought about this, I should have said, what's the speed of the projectile? Because the angle is always changing throughout the path here. It's a parabola. So does the angle really mean anything? Not, not a lot. I mean, there's an angle instantaneously right there at that point at 1.5 seconds. But it's always changing, so who really cares about that? But since I did say velocity, I'm going to go ahead and calculate that angle right here. So there's an angle right here at 1.5. Let's find out what it is. So how do we find that angle? Well, the angle is going to be related to the tangent. And so we need to take the arc tangent of the opposite divided by the adjacent, 13.97 divided by 40.96, because the tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So if I want to undo the tangent, I have to take the arc tangent, and you get about 18.83 degrees. To me, that's kind of meaningless. What I really wanted you to be able to do is calculate that speed. Didn't really want the angle, but that's how you would do it if you wanted to. Question number nine says, what is the maximum range of the gun firing the projectile? So we've changed some stuff here. If I take this cannon, what is the farthest I can launch that projectile? So the first thing we have to do is figure out when does that happen. Well, the maximum range happens at 45 degrees. So now I'm changing the angle, which means I've changed everything in the problem now. Okay, we no longer have the same initial speeds as I had in number one. I don't have the same times. Everything has changed. We're going a different length here. So I ask, what's the range of the gun? Well, the range of the gun is dx, the displacement in the x direction. And I know that that's related to velocity in the x direction initial. So initial launching speed times the time. But I don't know the time now because I've changed the angle. It's going further, so it's going to take more time. So now I have to worry about what was that time. So I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to have to recalculate a bunch of stuff. Now the good news is we've already solved for this in one of our previous problems. Um, so if we take a look at a... At a at a previous problem here, I can't remember which one it was, I think it was number five. Problem number five, we've already done the solving for. So from problem number five, uh, we set up and said that the displacement in the y direction is equal to one half gt squared plus the initial speed in the y times time. The displacement in the y direction is still zero because we're assuming it's going to start and end at the same y plane. So there's no change in the displacement of the y the the y distance we've changed the initial speed in the y direction though and i'm actually not going to calculate what that number is i'm just going to use the hypotenuse it's still launching at 50 but this time we change the angle to 45 so the initial speed in the y direction is going to be hypotenuse times the sine of 45 
So it's still like problem number one, except their angle is different. Uh, and I said I, I didn't get an overall number for that because I'm just going to use that as my number when I do this. From problem number five, we've already figured out that at time zero, it's at a displacement of zero because, of course, it hasn't launched yet. Or after we've done the factoring, we set this other factor, one half times gt plus 50 sine 45, because that's our initial speed in the y direction. We set that equal to zero. So now we just have to solve for t. So I subtract 50 over to the right. That's why that negative sign is right here. I have to multiply by 2 to get rid of the 1 half in front of the g. And then I have to divide by negative 9.81. Uh, this was the mistake I made on number 5 is I forgot about the negative sign on this. This time I included it. The negative signs have to cancel out and I have to get a positive time. And I got 7.71 seconds. This is why you need to know how to solve this originally. I didn't know the time it took to go halfway in this problem after I changed the angle. So I couldn't use that. So I need to know how to solve it this way. So we get 7.71 seconds to go the whole way. So now I know what the time is. So now I can come over here to my dx equation. I know that the speed in the x direction, the initial speed, is the hypotenuse times the cosine of 45. It's not the same speed it was in number 1 because it's not the same angle in number 1. Times 7.71 seconds that it's going to be in the air. So 50 cosine 45 times 7.71 the maximum distance I can launch that projectile is about 73 meters or so. 272.59 is what I calculated. All right, last question, number 10. I'm going to end on an easy note here. At what other angle were produced the same range as 35 degrees? This one's just a reasonable problem right here. We're talking about complementary angles. In class, I booted up the projectile motion simulator, and we found out that complementary angles should give you the same ranges. So in this case, complementary means angles that add up to 90. So our first angle was 35, so you take 90 minus 35, that's 55 degrees. 55 degrees is the other angle that will give you the same range. Now, 55 degrees means it's going higher. Um, it's going to spend more time in the air. It's going to go a higher height, but it's going to travel the same distance in the x direction as 35 did because they're complements. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those are our, our base problems. Uh, in class, we're going to be turning to our book and uh, turning to page 110 and working out page 37. Um, so if you are a student of my classes, that would be the next thing that we attempted to do. So if you're getting this because you were absent, uh, help yourselves to taking a look at that. The book is posted on the uh, Teams. And so you can take a look at that. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, send me a message on Remind or uh, send me an email. And I thank you for your time.